Computer science is the major for the kids who would get thrown into trash cans by the actual engineers. We're the betas of the STEM world. Doctors throw their lunch food at us, and chemists trip us as we walk past. But it's okay, because we know the greatest language of all. The language of the computer. In this video, you will go from knowing nothing at all about coding, to then still knowing absolutely nothing about coding. Let's begin with... Coding is interesting because everyone has a different go at it. When I was younger, I got into Scratch, which is where you drag around little blocks like a big fucking baby until it works. It's programming, it's just for your brain while you're still teething. Universities nowadays often teach Java, C++, or Python. There's probably one million long heated arguments about which starter language is better. So instead of talking to you about that, I'm just going to convey this to you by showing you a sample of what all of these arguments sound like at the same time. And that's coding. So your first step is really to pick what language to start with. You want to be a cool cat. You want to be the dude who writes scripts for Dark Souls. You want to be that epic, overdramatic guy in the hacking scenes of the 90s where they click all the big buttons that say hack on them and initiating the hacker sphere. Downloading the Matrix. Commencing firewall. Well, let me tell you something. Since I'm an arrogant, condescending computer programmer, just like you're about to be, I'm gonna teach you how to code in Scratch, and I'm gonna play baby noises, like nursery rhymes in the background. Yeah, suck on that. Goo goo gaga, motherfucker. Here we are in Scratch. That's right, we're gonna learn how to code. This is what is known as your IDE. IDE stands for Integrated Doofus Environment because you're a doofus. This little flag right here means that's where the program starts. Wow. This little guy is called an if statement. What? Now I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna put this guy in here. I'm gonna say if current year is greater than the year 2020, I'm gonna play a meow sound. Wow, that's so good. Is it gonna play a meow sound? Let's find out. No. It didn't. Now what if we change it to 2000? <laughs> wow, wait, wait, that's a meow. Any questions? All right, now go write a binary search tree and it's due tomorrow and also fuck you. All right, I know what you're thinking. That wasn't programming. That was for babies. You're right, you are. That isn't the real stuff. You want the real stuff. You want to be an arrogant prick like every other programmer. You want to feel really smart and better than everyone else. I get you. While the other kids were going out to parties, socializing and having fun, I was in my bedroom studying the art of the code. Well, here's what you're gonna do, okay? Normal programmers learn the basics of Java or C++. Everyone does that. To truly show off your superior intellect that you clearly have, you've gotta program in a language that nobody knows so that you can have something to brag about around your peers. Oh, you coded in Java? Well, I can code that in Jargon 89 assembly code, so suck my big fat cock, you loser. That's what you wanna be able to say. So no, I'm not gonna teach you how to drink coffee or increment the capital letter C. I'm gonna teach you a boring, stupid language that nerds you so you can go around and brag about it all day. So here we are in Notepad, the premier IDE. For all programmers, if you program in Notepad, you are infinitely superior to your mates. No one needs Notepad++, screw Pico and Vim and all that, okay? It's Notepad, baby. No, you know what? Get me out of here. It's MS Paint, baby. This is where the real coders code. All you have to do is take your code from MS Paint, feed it into a machine that reads text from an image, hope that it all goes through okay, and then feed that text into your compiler and then run it. Easy. That's how real programmers are supposed to code, okay? You dumb kids and your stupid IDEs wouldn't understand. Back in my day, we used to write our code by hand. Look at the size of this computer, oh my god! In 1880, our computers were the size of an elephant, idiot! So here's our code. That's right, okay, it's Java. I don't feel like explaining to you a functional programming language like SML, okay? Quite honestly, not even that good at it. I learned it like three weeks ago. The point is, this is Java. Let's teach you the basics. I've prepared a slideshow, don't worry. I've got you cut. First, we will start with the concept of the variable, right? Very simple concept, usually the first thing you learn in the programming world. A variable can be thought of as a box, okay? Imagine you have a box, and maybe it's in the attic, maybe it's in the garage, maybe it's still in the FedEx truck, you know, you got Amazon Prime, but it's going a little late. Maybe it's a blue box, Maybe it's in a red box. Maybe, heck, maybe the box is not really a box at all. Maybe it's just a bowl. It's a bowl, like a fruit bowl. Think of it like a giant fruit bowl, and inside of it are all these non fruits, like vegetables. Let's take uh, broccoli, for example. Okay, you have this piece of broccoli, and in fine print, Comic Sans on the broccoli stock is some word. Maybe it says blue. Oh, you know, you know what? It's a number. It says three. 
No, four. Okay, five. It says five. Well, then. Wow, there, there you go. go. You got the piece of rocket number five on it. Can you count, count that? Out? One, two, three, four, five. Uh, so yeah, anyway, uh, go write a quick sort sorting algorithm, and it's due tonight by midnight. Peace. Alright, so at this point, you're a genius. Uh, you, you know absolutely everything in the universe, you wear Hanes hoodies, and you code on your MacBook. You're set. Honestly, you're the smartest human being on the planet, man. I really mean it. You code. And for that, you're a genius. But now what do you do? You have all the skills, uh, you're right there, you're practically oozing with computer code and binaries falling out of your ears and hexadecimals are all over your clothes. Life's just a series of ones and zeros. It turns out programmers don't have it that easy, okay? You might be bright, but now you need a job. How are you gonna get it? Well, I'm gonna help you. Programmers' biggest problems are their crippling loneliness and lack of social stimulation. Who would have thought? Sitting in front of a computer for four years straight would get you to that point. That's why you need help getting prepared for interviews, because let's face it, you can't speak to another human being without convulsing and falling onto the floor in your own sweat. So what do you need? Well, let's look at a couple interview uh, example questions someone might ask you. The obvious one always it's always brought up is, what is your biggest weakness, right? This question's easy. It seems hard, but it's easy, okay? You look them straight in the eyes and you say, well, frankly, I spent the last four years of my life cooped up in my room programming on the command line, and I haven't seen the sun in months. Honestly, I had to cover my entire body with sunscreen before I went outside today, and it's partly cloudy. My entire purpose is to share code on GitHub, and I've never even kissed a girl, and honestly, I'm sweating right now. Feel my hands. You feel that? That's not just sweat, that's blood. I'm bleeding from my pores because I spend 16 hours a day typing at 180 words per minute, and I have carpal tunnel at the age of 22. Honestly, I need to see a doctor, but not just for that. I also have personality disorder, and I engage in Reddit arguments once an hour just to feel that last little drop of bliss because my ego is imploding. Do you know how that feels? You know how that feels? I have nothing left but disdain for this world. To be honest, if I don't do something fast, I'm gonna implode. And that's when the interviewer says, awesome, so can you code this in Scala? And you say, yeah. And that's how you'll spend the next 40 years of your life, cooped up in an office building, coding in Scala. Enjoy. Hey, thanks for watching. This week's video is brought to you by the lovely people over at ExpressVPN. Actually, I'm very passionate about computer science, which is why I'm studying it over at university. And one of the major areas of concern that we always learn about in class is data collection and data leaks. Anytime you put your information out there, let's say when you're buying something online, that credit card information can be stolen from hackers. Your data is constantly at risk online, more than you would think. ExpressVPN encrypts your internet data, preventing others from grabbing your information over the network. For less than $7 a month with a 30-day month money back guarantee, you get the fastest speeds of any VPN provider on the market. You can use ExpressVPN on any device, it's really nice, as well as VPN server locations in 94 countries. It's easy to use and very easy to install. And from there, your data is protected for such a low price too. The service is genuinely awesome and I've actually been using this every day since I signed up for it. It's consistently fast, it's a great product. Take back your internet privacy today and find out how you can get three months free by clicking the link in the description box. ExpressVPN.com slash Take back your privacy today with ExpressVPN.